<clears throat> and now it is time for tech news. So thanks for your likes and your views. There's E3 leaks and heists, Windows 10 end of life, and a passive aggressive Noctus, Noctu, Noctua. All right, that one still needs some work, but I've been wanting to start the show with a tech limerick for some time now, since it's an incredibly efficient way to communicate. It was that or a haiku. There's a lot to talk about this week though, so let's move on. But if you do enjoy my poetry, remind me to tell you the one about the man from Nantucket. Excellent. The Thermaltake Tough Air 310 is a tower style CPU cooler built to handle up to 170 watt TDP CPUs from AMD or Intel. Four six millimeter U-shaped copper heat pipes efficiently transfer heat to the Tough Air 310's asymmetrical fin stack, designed for increased airflow while still leaving plenty of room for taller memory modules. A powerful but quiet 120 millimeter 2000 RPM high static pressure fan rounds out the package. So if you want to lower your temps with the CPU cooler from Thermaltake's Tough Air series, click the sponsor link in the video description. E3 2021 is a digital remote event featuring a huge array of live streamed and pre-recorded content on YouTube and Twitch. And while it technically runs from Saturday, June 12th to Tuesday, June 15th, as is often the case with big events like this, there are lots of companies trying to get out ahead of the news cycle with early announcements. So on Wednesday, EA and DICE dropped the official trailer for Battlefield 2042, the next installment of the long running franchise that is set in a near future world that's been ravaged by climate driven disasters. Key points are that the game can now support Support 128 player combat on PCs and next gen consoles, and we'll have no campaign, but three main multiplayer combat modes that can also be played in single player mode versus AI, and they've specifically ruled out Battle Royale mode for now. The trailer is pretty intense, as expected, with lots of fan service and the inclusion of helicopter battles, wingsuits, a tornado that doesn't really obey the laws of physics at all, and the infamous Rendezouk accomplished by ejecting from your jet to blow up an enemy jet with a bazooka before re-entering your original jet. Expect a Battlefield 2042 Alpha in early July with the full launch scheduled for October 22nd. It will cost $60 on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, and $70 on Xbox Series X and PS5, because those people have more money. Beyond that, many game studios and distributors have announcements planned, with Ubisoft kicking things off Saturday with more on the Rainbow Six, Assassin's Creed, and Far Cry properties, and Xbox and Bethesda hosting a joint press conference today, Sunday, at 1 p.m. Eastern. Square Enix later today and more expected beginning Monday with presentations from Limited Run Games, Razer, Capcom, and Take-Two Interactive, and Nintendo will be up on Tuesday, possibly with info on a new high-end version of the Switch. If you love video games, E3 has a lot to offer. As long as you're not a Sony fanboy or girl, they're sitting this one out. Last week, we showed a teaser video that AMD posted about their Radeon Pro W6000 GPUs, and on Tuesday, they launched said GPUs, which are based on RDNA 2, or Big Navi architecture, and support 32 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, at least in the top end W6800, which will sell for 2,250 US dollars. More details are in the article for you workstation GPU enthusiasts out there, but perhaps most interesting is that the Radeon Pro W6600 uses the Navi 23 GPU, which is rumored to also power AMD's lower to mid tier gaming graphics cards like the RX 6600 XT and RX 6600 if those ever go up for sale. Info on die size, core counts, and raw performance from the W6600 will likely be translated across to estimate gaming performance of the new Radeon gaming graphics cards, but unfortunately we'll have to wait until sometime in Q3 for the W6600 to be available at retail. The W6800 is available now though. Noctua had to get a little aggressive about their passive CPU cooler, dubbed the NHP1, which Newegg listed for sale this week, as spotted by Fanless Tech. It has a $100 price tag, compatibility with AMD AM4 and Intel mainstream and high-end CPU sockets, excellent RAM clearance, and is recommended for CPUs that don't output high heat loads. So while no TDP is listed, they suggest Intel CPUs up to 8 cores like the 9900K, and even a 3950X on the AMD side, but overclocking isn't a good idea with passive cooling. It's also not a good idea to list products for sale that aren't actually available yet, which is what Newegg did, forcing Noctua to say, hey, Stop that. Still no confirmed launch date for the NHP1. It's listed on Noctua's public product roadmap for Q2 2021 though, so that should mean by the end of this month. It's time for a new segment where I expose the evil machinations of the villains, thieves, and scoundrels of the tech world. I call it 
villains, thieves, and scoundrels. Over in China, the ever-increasing street value of GPUs led some feckless douchebags to rob an internet cafe of their precious GPUs. Six cards in total, valued at about $7,800, were robbed in broad daylight after the perps, posing as potential renters of the facility, asked the cafe owner to fetch them a trash bag. It's bad enough that retailers and board makers are already robbing the public blind with insane pricing, now you'd better watch out for petty thievery as well. Even more sad that these weren't recreational gaming rigs, they were part of a business. So yeah, I hope the thieves are caught and that all the bad things in the world happen to them and only them. But maybe a few bad things could also be spared to happen to the hackers who recently stole 780 gigabytes worth of data from EA, including the full source code for FIFA 2021 and its matchmaking tools, and the source code for the Frostbite engine that powers the upcoming Battlefield 2042, among other titles. This was first reported by Motherboard, who reached out to EA, who confirmed the breach, although a spokesperson stressed that no player information was shared. Fallout could be wide-ranging since EA publishes such a vast array of titles, but we'll have to wait and see if the Battlefield 2042 launch is tarnished by hackers jumping into 128 player matches with God Mode turned on. In other hacking news, a 100 gigabyte text file supposedly containing 82 billion passwords, the largest compilation of all time, was shared on a popular hacking forum on Monday. Compilations like this are often used in brute force attacks that utilize known passwords, even though other login info isn't attached, but the largest compilation ever headline has gradually deflated over the course of the week as it was revealed that there are only only 8.4 billion unique entries in the file, not 82 billion, and further scrutiny showed that the data is actually a combination of various words and phrases found on Wikipedia and other previously known leaked lists. So not a huge new leak, but a collection of entries from other similar lists. Less of a concern, but still a reminder not to use the same login info on multiple websites if you can avoid it, and you can check databases like Have I Been Pwned to see if your super unique and special passwords have made it onto one of these lists over time. Meanwhile, the stand-up gentlemen over at Hardware Unboxed have reported shady and manipulative tactics with review samples provided by LG, specifically with gaming monitor reviews where LG reps have attempted to manipulate and control Hardware Unboxed's editorial direction. It began with the brand pushing late embargo dates, but escalated when LG sent internal direction review guidelines that they said Tim needed to follow like not comparing the 32 GP850 model he was reviewing to older LG monitors. LG are free to suggest ways to test. Many companies do this through review guides, but stipulating that a monitor has to be reviewed following a certain guideline is overstepping the boundary between company and reviewer in a big way. If your review to 32 GP850 contains nothing that would be against the guideline, please let me know. Otherwise, few edits would necessary. That's just a bad look, and there's no way a legitimate reviewer would agree to it. But they also had requirements for how to use the UFO test, and how to measure contrast ratio, and most egregiously, LG wanted an editorial review of the video prior to publication, and offered additional compensation if Tim would share the draft of his review with them before it went live. That's called a bribe, LG, and you made it worse when you asked Tim not to publish the video after he told you guys to go pound sand. I've never accepted sponsorship from LG before personally, just to be clear, although they have sent some samples that I have produced content on, but I will be taking this into consideration for the future and keeping an eye on the fallout since Tim's video only just went live on Friday. Brands like LG seem to be getting more and more flagrant in the use of manipulative tactics like this, and I applaud Tim for speaking out on it so definitively. Do better, LG. Looks like LG already got the message, though. In a late-breaking update to this story, LG head of global corporate communications Ken Hong contacted Harbor on Box late Friday, promising significant changes to how they handle monitor reviews, with an email follow-up saying the LG CNS team who started this whole mess won't be handling monitor PR anymore, and also outlining standards that they'll be implementing going forward. Thanks to everyone who added to the public outcry about this, and we'll be keeping tabs to make sure LG follows through on these promises in the future. Rounding out this this shady segment, Overclockers UK is attempting to charge 5,000 British pounds for an RTX 3070. But wait, they're doing it for you, for the gamers. It seems that the latest move by a retailer to combat GPU scalpers involves grossly overpricing them, but then offering discount vouchers to longtime forum members with the members market access, specifically for Overclockers UK. That 5,000 GBP gigabyte RTX 3070 Vision OC comes down to only 600 quid after the 4,400 pound price reduction. That's a ton of savings. Actually, a couple tons. 
Get it? Pounds. Okay. And now for tech briefs, where a story's length is inversely proportional to its girth, or importance. Still working the math out on that. Microsoft has spent a lot of time convincing people to switch to Windows 10, and now they're killing it. Or rather, they've announced when Windows 10 will go end of life and stop receiving security and quality updates, October 14th, 2025. Yes, they might still extend that like they did with Windows 7, but it does seem to indicate that Windows 10 is not going to be the last ever version of Windows, as some have suspected. There's a big update codenamed Sun Valley that might just be a whole new operating system. Expect more when Microsoft hosts a big event scheduled for June 24th. Samsung introduced the first mass-produced 3D NAND memory called VNAND in 2013 and then launched products based on it the following year. I know, because I was there, Gandalf. I was there seven years ago when Samsung took the 3D VNAND with 24 layers and cast it into the fires of Mount Doom. Actually, I made a vlog. It was a fun trip to Korea. But the point is that Samsung is now making 176 layer VNAND that will provide storage for PCIe 4.0 and 5.0 SSDs, and they have their sights set on 200 layer and eventually 1000th layer VNAND. So there's still a lot more capacity to be gained with new SSD technology. And thanks again for having me back in 2014, Samsung. I really enjoyed those bumper cars. TSMC makes a lot of chips that are in high demand, so many have asked if they'll build more fabs to improve supply. The answer seems to be yes, and while these things take time, it was revealed on Thursday that they're in talks with the Japanese government to build a 12-inch wafer plant in the Kumamoto Prefecture in western Japan, according to Nikkei Asia. Like in the US, where TSMC is also in talks to build a fab or fabs, Japan is offering state subsidies to lure in companies like TSMC by alleviating some of their upfront build costs. Kingston sold their HyperX gaming peripherals brand to HP in a deal that closed on June 1st. But Kingston still makes memory kits, and they need a name, so they will now be called Kingston Fury instead of Kingston HyperX Fury. They made a video with a new logo that looks pretty edgy, I guess, but I feel like Fury would be a better brand name for GPUs right now, which are much more likely to induce that emotion. And to end on a high note, if you didn't hear already, Control is free on the Epic Games Store this week until June 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's a very well-reviewed game, it's free to keep forever if you grab it while it's available, and yeah, it's a push to get more people to sign up for the Epic Games Store, but also free game. So that's a reasonable trade-off. Free stuff, good. And that's all for my free stuff for this week. Tech news is now complete. I'd love to share more of my tech poetry, but we're just all out of time. Your feedback is always welcome though, of course, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Check out all the articles I talked about today, which are linked in the description. And a closing reminder to click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.